Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be installing the Veritas Dowel Former. Well, not too long ago on the show, I brought you What Did Kenny Get For Christmas? And one of the things that I received was the Veritas Dowel Former. But I would like mine installed permanently on my bench. Problem is, you have to drill a Forstner hole or a flat bottom hole to a rather large uh, diameter. And I really don't have a need for that size bit, nor do I have one. So then I got to thinking, well, what if there are other people out there that want to drill a flat bottom hole but don't have that bit? And that's what we're going to focus on today, and that's what we're going to show you. And it all starts off over at the bench. So, without a 3 inch diameter Forstner bit, how do we go about it? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a scrap of quarter inch MDF or hardboard. So the purpose of the quarter inch thick MDF or hardboard is that we need to make a template for routing our hole to recess our steel disc. And for that, I'm going to be using a 7 16 outer diameter guide bushing. You can use whatever size that you have. It doesn't have to be 7 16 This is just the one I grabbed. As well, I have a quarter inch straight bit uh, double flute it and that is what we will be using to cut our recess But before we can do any of that we need to install this into our router as well as the bit so that we can take some measurements Well, I've changed my mind on the bit only because I decided that I wanted to use my trim router to get a little bit of extra control I have still a quarter inch diameter bit installed and still the 7 16 outer diameter guide bushing. If you don't know the diameter of your bushing and if you don't know the diameter of your bit, you can calculate it manually by measuring. And all you need to do is measure from the outside of your guide bushing to the cutting edge of your bit. And in this case, when I measured that, it came out to be 3 seconds of an inch. And I just pushed this up against the outer edge like that and pushed my little depth measuring device <laughs> up against the cutter. And you end up with 3 seconds. Now, if you know the diameters, in this case, we have an outer diameter of 7 16 and we have a bit diameter of one quarter inch. So you can take 7 16 minus one quarter and that will give you um, the difference between the two diameters. But you have to divide it in half. And when you do that, you will end up with 3 30 seconds. So both a manual and a mathematical way to figure it out. So what we need to do now, knowing that our offset here from the edge of our guide bushing to the cutting edge, knowing that the offset is 3 30 seconds of an inch, we need to take the measurement of our circle, which will be 3 inches, and add that offset to it. So we will be needing to cut a template hole that will be 3 inches and 3 30 seconds of an inch to allow for our guide bushing. So for simplicity's sake, knowing that we want our 3 inch hole exactly centered over top of our bench dog holes, we need to measure from the edge of the bench to the center of the dog hole. And in this case, we have 2 and a quarter inches. So we will place a reference line on our MDF at two and a quarter inches. And this will be the center axis of our circle. So at this point now, you want to take your compass, set it for that circle, 
and we're going to draw our three and thirty second diameter circle just like that now because we have used the center line here that is the same measurement as our bench dog hole center we should once we get this template cut out and shaped we should be able just to line this up with the edge of the bench and our hole will automatically be centered front to back on our dog hole here so let us just check now our dimensions and well it's hard to say here we should have three and three thirty seconds we have three and an eighth which is actually um, a thirty second too big but that's okay I'm not concerned about a thirty second of an inch what we need to do now is take this over to the scroll saw and we're gonna cut this out well, for this cutout, you're going to want to cut inside the lines because we're going to use an oscillating drum sander and sand up to the line afterwards. You have to remember that this is a template and every imperfection you have in the template is going to show up in your final piece. So we'll cut just inside the line and then take it over to the drum sander. After looking at it a little closer and uh, sanding and that sort of thing I decided that the fact that this hole was a little too big did bother me and I didn't sand up quite to the line I'm going to try to compensate for the mismeasurement on my part you get one shot at this guys so make it right and in order to test it I've got a half inch piece of scrap plywood here I use some double-sided tape to attach it to our template and as well I clamped it there just to help it get some extra adhesive uh, strength. So I'm going to clamp this to the bench and then I'm going to use that router to run through here and see exactly what size our hole is and how well our steel ring fits in it. Well, in testing the ring, I can see that this hole is not quite big enough. So, not a problem. You can always make it bigger. You can't make it smaller. So, I'm going to take our template over to the oscillating sander. I'm going to sand a little more, get it up to the line, and then I'm going to come back over, place it back where it belongs, and make another test route with this until I'm happy with the fit. Well, it took a couple of routing processes and adjustments, but I think I finally have the template to where I want it. So you can see there, we've got a nice snug fit. Um, it's still a little raised, but that's okay. We can adjust that afterwards. I'm not concerned about it being that little bit raised. So what I need to do at this point now is center my template over whichever bench dog hole I want this plate mounted and we're gonna do the routing uh, guys please don't forget your hearing protection and your dust protection and and your eyewear I have applied a couple pieces of double-sided tape I have my straight edge here and like I said because we measured the center of our bench dog holes just by lining up the edge of our template with the edge of the bench we have it centered front to back we're now going to take a couple careful measurements to make sure that we're centered left to right and once we get that all set in place we're going to clamp it down to give the uh, double-sided tape a good chance to get a good adhesion onto the bench and once you're happy with the adhesion I would put a clamp on it just to be certain you don't want this thing shifting during the routing process 
And once you're secure and happy that this is not going anywhere, route it out. I'm gonna test the ring in here and see how it fits. We're also gonna check for the height and it looks like it might be just a little bit proud here. Oh, if it is, it's ever so slightly. So that's okay. We're gonna double check it and make sure that everything is sitting flush. And once we're happy with the mount, then we can move on to the next step. Now there were a couple areas that were not perfectly flat and you could see there that I was hovering the bit over those areas and doing a nice circular motion, making sure to keep it flat on our template. And now that we have that done, I've test fit it and we can remove our template, which by the way, might take a little bit of persuading due to that double-sided tape. That sticky stuff, there we go. And there we have that pretty much perfect recess for our disc to sit flush on our bench in. So at this point in time now, this sharp edge here, I'm just going to go around ever so slightly with a piece of 220 grit. There's a couple burrs on there I want to remove. And then we're going to screw this down into our recess. We'll just place our disc there and I've just set a stop here. Honestly, the only reason for this is <laughs> it would drive me crazy if I were to have that on the bench and it were to be mounted, say like that. That would drive me insane. I would look at that every day and think, what the heck was I thinking? So. You can call it OCD, you can call it whatever you want. I don't care, it's my bench and I want it straight. So, we're just gonna line this up here so that I know it's perfectly straight in our hole. And once I'm happy with that, just like that, I'll mark those holes, we'll center punch and drill them and we'll use the screws that were provided with this jig to uh, screw it down to the bench. Well, I changed my mind about the supplied hardware. For starters, it's only a three quarter inch long screw. I want something a little more substantial and it's Phillips head and uh, I got no use for Phillips. So, going to the tried and true Canadian of a Robertson inch and a half, number 10, and we're just gonna secure this in place. Well, now that we have it mounted to the bench, how about a demonstration? Now with this jig, you have to remember that the less material that it has to take off, the better that it works. So I have here a quarter inch die for the dowels and with my plate, it just snaps into the plate just like that. And you take whatever species you want. This is cherry. I have uh, cut it so that it is just slightly over the quarter inch dowel mark. I've even knocked off some of the corners here with, uh, with a block plane just quickly. And I've sharpened the end so that it fits easily into the hole. And then you just want to take your wackometer, don't use a metal one, a wooden wackometer, and drive it down through the die. and we'll drive it through the rest of the way. And what you end up with is a quarter inch dowel. It's not perfect. Here's another one I've driven through. They're not 100% perfect, but what they are perfect for is dowel joinery. 
Um, they are a quarter inch in diameter and you can drive them through quickly for those times when you need like one dowel. It's spectacular. Just <laughs> drive it through and away you go. Love it. And there you have it. Mounting of the Veritas dowel former. Guys, this video is not really about mounting the dowel former. It's great that we got to do a little demonstration and show you how it works. And it's great that I had a practical um, application to use the template because routing with templates and using that uh, bushing is what this video is about. Where, where this video all comes from is problem solving. And the problem started when I didn't have a bit that was big enough to drill that three inch diameter, quarter inch deep hole that I needed in my bench. So what it's all about is finding a solution for that. I have said it many times on the show, both on camera and in the comments below, I have said that for every process in woodworking, there is multiple ways that you can accomplish that. And just because I show you a way here on the show, that doesn't mean that that is gospel. It doesn't mean it's etched in stone. What it means is this is the way I did it. And if you can come up with a way that is safe and efficient and you have fun doing it, then there's nothing wrong with that. So what this show is about is seeing a need for a three inch flat bottom diameter hole quarter inch deep and I didn't have the bit so I found a way around it and the way I found was making a template using a uh, a router and routing that hole and you can see the results are spectacular you just have to take your time the secret here is test cuts the secret is making sure that all your ducks are in a row and that you're happy with the results before you ever touch that router to your bench. Test and test and test. I did several routings to make sure that I had it just the way I want it before I ever touch that router bit to the bench and you should be doing the same. Don't settle if you want that perfect result then do that perfect result. If you're OCD like me and you gotta have those screws perfectly aligned parallel with the edge of the bench, then do it. It's your bench. You're the one that has to look at it. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, push it that way from now on. <laughs> Guys, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in today's show. If nothing more, I hope that you've taken away from this show that just because you don't have specific tools to do something doesn't mean that you can't do it. Don't have a scroll saw? Use a fret saw or a jigsaw. Like there's always an option, always an option. So think outside the box and as long as it's safe, go ahead and do it. Guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. This one's been a lot of fun for me. Uh, a necessary evil to mount this thing into the bench, but that's what I had to do. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays. Man. <laughs> ah, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> that was hilarious. Now I have to get that out. <laughs>